Hi guys! Today we finally have some sun here in Maryland, so I thought it would be the perfect day to give you a plant tour in the greenhouse. So let's go on up here. I'm going to try not to fall down this muddy hill and see what's going on in the greenhouse. Um, I've had it zipped up pretty much for the last week and I opened it up for some fresh air last night when it stopped pouring. But here we go. Everything has been looking really happy. I have some new additions to show you here. Got everything spread out. Um, I did have some flooding on the floor, but that's okay. I can clean it up as long as my plants haven't been poured on. And there was a hurricane on the east coast, which uh, gave us some rain, but we weren't really part of that system other than getting thunderstorms and um, as the storm broke up but I hope everybody's okay in North Carolina and South Carolina in the affected regions hope you all are okay down there and let me start with the plant tour here so I don't think I'm going to point out everything I'm just going to highlight some things but I have organized the cacti in different categories and this is the serious area here got a couple of my favorite fuzzy ones here we have named him Fred he's kind of famous and this guy as well I'll have to think of a name maybe you guys can recommend a name for him he has uh, his hair kind of grows in a curl on the top of his head so I get a kick out of that one and he does also remind me of my late my late dog zip so that's actually why I bought that one but if you guys could help me name him that would be really fun so here is um, a cactus pad that I picked up I think this was uh, I've forgotten now where I picked up this pad it might have been the Whole Foods pad and then down next to it I have this pad which did die back on the top and I did trim it but as you can see it's green and it's still uh, growing I'm quite sure that it has put out some roots otherwise it wouldn't have been able to last this long so there's an, a little pad update on my cactus pad rescues and then uh, I'll show you some new additions my husband ordered this one for me. I think that's really beautiful. Apuntia microdiasis. And that's from my a gift from my husband. I thought that was really thoughtful and such a pretty one. That one has such beautiful details on it. And it looks fuzzy, but of course uh, you don't want to be touching those. And this was a rescue. He's not looking so great yet, but um, it's like a little brother for Fred and this one is a uh, Stenoceras hollianus cristata and it really suffered with all the rain in the spring and summer but it has put out some new healthy growth and I think it's going to make it that's an interesting one looks a little bit like a, a brain with all the twists and turns and this was my Puntia cylindrica which I went ahead and transplanted out of the dish garden which was too soggy but let me just highlight some of the new things and give you a few updates um, this one is doing well it's kind of tall and skinny but that is also a micro diasis. I think I'm saying that right. An apuntia. But I hope it shows up on camera. But these little aerials uh, look like cinnamon. It's, it's a cinnamon color. So that's kind of interesting. And this one, my Echinopsis dominos, has been blooming all summer. As you can see, this one, this bloom is spent. But hopefully, I, I wasn't up here in the 
greenhouse when it was open, but hopefully it got pollinated and it will make another seed like the one of my other ones did. Now I had about three other blooms that did not go to seed, which is fine because there'll be a lot of seed in this pod, but it has just been a prolific bloomer this summer, so it's pretty happy about things, I would say, doing well. I always think blooms are an indication your plants are happy and functioning as they should. And here we come down here. I have some some of uh, its babies over here, which I've rooted out. They look like they could use some water. And oh, I have another. Um, I'm a fan of fuzzy plants, so this one is an Apuntia snow, I believe. And that one just is all fuzzy and gorgeous. And ever since I put these fuzzy guys in the tunnel, they're a lot more fluffy because they're not in a constant state of dampness and their hair looks fabulous. So let me take you over here. So this was my Apuntia section, um, except I have my corn cob cactus here. And um, I don't know why that's kind of tucked in there, but it is a Trichocerus brevispinus. Oh, that was with the Cer Cereus collection. I see. But uh, the Apuntia collection is grouped here. And, um, oh, here's my mammalaria pads from my, mamma I'm sorry, my Apuntia violacea is down here as well. And that I had to rescue because the main pad, which I rooted last year, had rotted. And I did a video on that, but those seem to have taken, and I'm noticing some new aerials coming out on the top there. It's definitely growing, so I'm quite sure that that has rooted and I'll be able to save that plant, so that's good news. And um, I've also done a lot of repotting into terracotta uh, in another effort to help these roots stay drier. Um, terracotta does wick away moisture, so this was one that I did do. My my Mammillaria rodantha, and I love her because she's a redhead. I, I take a lot of pictures of her, and um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but I do put pictures up on Instagram, and I just recently um, put pictures up for sale, too, on pleasantprickles.pixels.com, and um, I just love to take pictures of my collection and other plants that I see on my shopping excursions, but that's been something really fun that I've done, and um, I have that up for sale, and I really enjoy it. But I hope you guys will follow me on Instagram, because I have a lot of fun with that as well, and a lot of my pictures are up there as well. But this is my mammalaria section, and I really have a soft spot for Mammillaria. Someone has an emergency, I guess. There's an ambulance going by. But uh, some of these are not identified, um, but I do believe they are Mammillarias. This one I'm not so sure about. It may be a Mammillaria. And this one I just got. I just rescued this, so it's not even put into a terracotta pot yet. But that one is a new addition. Let me go ahead and turn it around so you can see the name. But I have one of these that um, died. It was a drugstore rescue and it just didn't make it. It had been starved of water and care for a long time. But um, this, my other drugstore rescues did make it. This is called the Red-Headed Irishman, Mammillaria spinosissima. And I think it's a fairly common plant, but I've had my eye out for this one. And I did get it at Home Depot, so they had those dumb flowers glued on. And it so it did lose some spines here, but that's fine. It'll grow out. And it seems to have survived the flower removal. And then let me keep going here, because there's some other new additions I want to talk about. I think I did this one in a plant haul. This was one of my may have been my Home Depot plant haul. It's a nice mammillaria there. Let me see if I have a, a label on that one. Just 
to tell you again. That one is the oh Mammalopsis senilis. I actually didn't know there was a species called Mammalopsis senilis. I wonder if that's a typo or if that's really a species I, I haven't come across yet. So that's exciting, but it is with my Mammalaria. Um, that might be a hybrid between uh, maybe an Echinopsis and a Mammalaria. If any of you know anything about a Mammalopsis, uh, comment below. I'd love to hear what you know about it. And uh, this is another one that I love to photograph. My Mammalaria Hahaniana. And I have a bristle brush, brush cactus, Mammalaria. And let me show you what's going on back here. A lot, oh, first I want to show you my baby. This one I believe is a Mammalaria. This could be a Hahaniana, but this was one of my seedlings. And he's being showcased here. So a couple of these are new, and that one too I think is new as well. That one is a pincushion cactus. Oh no, that was part of my breakdown of a dish garden. And I have a Mammalaria fragilis over here. But I was going to show you back here, this one is having all kinds of pups come out and I'm telling you ever since I moved these to the greenhouse and I've been able to regulate more water less water um, they're just so much happier and I they're also uh, UV protected so I know that sounds really funny to protect a cactus which grows in a desert from the UV rays but um, I just think it's kind of like an ideal light situation in here and obviously less water but there are lots of pups coming out on that one so that looks great and my Echinopsis uh, Echnobivia excuse me rainbow burst is just always prolifically putting out pups and that is just that was always in a wet state. It was planted up in this plastic pot and it was just always wet but I think it is really feeling good now that it's not so wet. This was one that was in the dish garden I broke down. Oh and this is a, something exciting. This week I came out here after not coming up here for a few days and these things have taken off and I ended up giving some liquid cactus food. food. I think it's, um, it's an organic mix by miracle Grow, And it's very stinky stuff. I think there's, you know, like kelp and that type of thing. Probably manure. But it's an organic fertilizer. And these just almost doubled in size when I did that. They were very happy about that. And I do have an Instagram post on how much they've grown this summer. Because it's really quite amazing but they're doing really well. And here were my painted cactus. They continue to grow out of their paint. And they were in the dish garden I broke down, so they're happy as well. Everything really seems to be happy here. This was just one of my crazy Echnobivia rainbow burst pups that um, over the winter got etiolated. And, um, but you know, these cacti are so resilient that they'll still continue to find a way to grow. And even though it got really skinny in the middle, it put out pups all over the place. And I just think that's a crazy looking fun cactus. And then everything over here is doing well. My gold, giant golden barrel, let me give you a size, a reference on that, is doing really well. And these have done much better. These sort of yellowed out when they were getting too much sun. Maybe they're sensitive to UV rays. I'm not sure, but they're much happier in the greenhouse. So that's a good example. And here's some more of my seedlings, which are doing fantastic. My uh, Astrophytum babies are getting really big. I've got two of those. And these are some type of Mammalaria. And Again, it could be the Hahaniana, not sure. And these, I'm not sure what they are. These could be Ferrocactus or Gymnocolysium. If you guys recognize those seedlings, let me know. I have grown both of those in the past and it just kind of got lost in the mix about what they are. 
Let me bring you over here. So I have, oh, I did expand my Noto Cactus collection, and those are back here. I have a Noto Cactus Ubelmianus, Mianus, and um, that's actually three small ones there that I just picked up. I just thought they were so beautiful. I did already have one larger one, and I love this one too. Spination on there is just beautiful. But so I got the smaller version here. So I have two of those. And then over here I have a, sh a Notocactus Schlosserai. And again, he had to have a flower taken off, but already he's grown out. So that's nice. That's a beauty. And uh, at least it will be once that grows down to the side. And then this is my Notocactus Linen Housei one of my longer named cactuses and it is beautiful this one I do love to pet um, I just think it feels like a crew cut so that's a fun one and the this is my Noto Cactus Scopa Silver Ball Cactus and this one is a brand new one and I think that one is spectacular and it's got a mix of these soft white spines and then red ones come out of it and it is so beautiful. I've taken some pictures of this one. And over here, these are my dragon fruit seedlings. Oh, and let me take it back here. I wonder if I should water these. These are my lithops. Um, I have heard though, once they start to split, uh, which I think they're doing over here, you're not supposed to water them. So, you know, these are really tricky and I've really laid off any watering whatsoever. So I hope that's the right thing to do here. And then this is a Camnobivia, Camelobivia rose quartz. And this was the one I did. It was very etiolated and I chopped the top off. This was a cactus surgery video that I did and it closed up and sent out four new arms. So again, cacti are so resilient. They're going to find a way to grow uh, no matter what. And um, so that was a successful surgery. There's an update for you there. And I think it looks so neat now. And then this one is a new one. And I had to take a flower off here right here but it looks like almost like a new pup might be growing so I don't know if it's a pup or not we'll have to see how that develops but you can barely see the the plant in that one that was so fuzzy so that's a snow pole cactus Espotoa lantana so I'm going to enjoy having that one I don't know if it stays small or if this is just the seedling version of it, but we'll have to see how that grows. I thought it was fun. And I have a Rebutia Cranziana. That's the only one I have of that. Let me show you how my um, dragon fruit is doing. So this was had a moon cactus on top, which died. So instead of throwing the whole thing away, I cut the moon cactus off and it sent out something like this which grew and I cut that off and planted it and now it's growing two more arms so I think I'm just going to keep using it as a mother plant to, to put in to keep using those as cuttings and create a bigger dragon fruit plant so that's been let me bring that up where you can see it there you go so I've already planted one arm of it two more arms are sprouting and that's kind of a fun thing you can do if you should lose your moon cactus. Go ahead and try that. And then over here I have my Adenium obesums, and they're all different varieties. This one looks terrible, but as you can see it does have a teeny tiny new leaf. And it's kind of been the, the uh, underachiever this summer. They're all different varieties and they may need a little water. Or it could be that they're yellowing up because they do go dormant as the weather cools down. We have had a couple of cool nights, although during the day it's still up in the 80s, sometimes 90s. 
And uh, let me show you over here. Oh, these are my Golem Jade cuttings. They've taken root really well. And it looks like we're getting into some of the succulents and they all have been put into a new medium, which is a mix of um, unscented clay cat litter. I don't have the calcined clay one that a lot of people talk about in Europe, but I did get the unscented clay kitty litter. And this is aquarium substrate. Um, and you have to make sure you get the porous kind, not like the highly polished kind. And also um, I got coconut uh, coir uh, as, as kind of a rough mix. I mixed it in, not the real fine one, but you get a brick of those. Also, so those two items I got at the aquarium store actually. The aquarium substrate and the um, coconut coir bark type mix. And also I put in these hydro balls, which are clay as well. So I put those items in there, about four items mixed up in um, not necessarily equal parts, but you do want some organic things mixed in there as well. So all of my succulents got repotted, well, almost all of them into that mix, and they are actually much happier that way because I'm trying to do a better job in growing my succulents. I think um, with all the humidity around here, it was just too moist to keep them in soil. So uh, this guy really plumped out after I did that. It's looking very happy. He's in Aloe Crosby's Prolific, and I love his, I love his angry teeth there. And uh, they just seem much happier about that. I have my big guys over here. These are my Trichocerus patchenoise. And this mother plant has really put out some very nice arms. And those can be cut off and rooted themselves, but I really like the way that looks. And these are looking great over here. Now I had some problems with my Euphorbia trigona, and that was indoors, not getting a lot of light. Also, in the air conditioning, I don't think it really appreciated that. So it did get uh, changed into this mix and put in the greenhouse. And um, I'm not sure how it's going to do. I don't know if it was just too far along before I attempted to rescue it. But this one already doesn't look so good leaning over. So oh, this is the first one I'm showing you that really isn't doing so well. So we'll see how that does and if any of these limbs survive. I'll keep you updated on that and then I have some more th succulents over here and I did a cute little garden here kind of a bonsai dish and I have some more things over here and this is the shadier side of the greenhouse I've got some leaves that I'm trying to root um, I see some of them have died but again I put them on that that new substrate that I'm trying and I have a bunch of these guys just sort of air drying down here. We'll see what happens. I have my seedlings here, which I haven't opened in weeks, which may be a good thing. Um, this one looks pretty good. Let's just take a look and see what's going on in this one because they look pretty big. <gasps> look how cute they look. They're just adorable. I hope you can see they really look like whatever cactus they are. Um, it's probably my, from my mammillaria seeds. This might be the arrow, the arrowhead cactus. Um, we'll, we'll have to see. I, I've lost track, um, and the writing came off of these, so it's going to be kind of a surprise what they are. But let me just scan over here to my succulents. I have Haworthias and aloes. And again, they're all very happy about the greenhouse. Um, some of them are very happy about the new mix. These are some aloe species in the front here. And in the back, I have some more. And this little guy has been horrible for me ever since I've gotten him. And when I put him sort of in a shady area in the greenhouse, I haven't even transferred him to the new mix. He's just so much happier. So 
that's finally starting to do well. And got those aloes in the back. And I did have to move some things. We had a little bit of a leak from the roof and I just moved some plants out of the way. So it's a little barren at the top here, but I loved how these came out, my dwarf ox tongues. And that is an antique planter that I found at a thrift shop and I put some holes in it. Um, Got to be careful though, you don't want to decrease the value of an antique uh, by putting holes in it, but I did, did with that one. And this is my spice cactus looking very happy. And another, oh there's my gasteria in the back. And these are, these are dwarf gasterias. So I have my gasterias, my aloes, and my haworthias grouped together over here. And then I have, I've brought these in. These are my beaver tail cactus. This is going to be such a long video for you guys. This is my beaver tail cactus. And they have been wet pretty much for months. And I decided finally I better bring them in before the heavy rains really came. And they usually go outside the entrance of my greenhouse, but they're going to, I'm going to let them dry out now that things are getting cooler in the winter. But they're doing amazingly. And over here, I have some of my Echnobivia Rainbow Burst cuttings. These are a couple years old now, and they're really getting big. And a couple more of my new additions. This was one of my Echeverias that I got recently. And over here, that is a plant that I had that I just transferred into the mix. Also another Echeveria. Looking very happy and plump. And then lastly, here is a Kalanchoe. And that one, I think, really likes it in the greenhouse as well. It's going to fill out more. But anytime a leaf drops from that, that just starts growing. So that's interesting. And that's about it, guys. That is the whole greenhouse. And like I said, just about everything is super happy about having this new dry home, um, warm and dry. And I am running out of room on my table, so I should probably slow down with the collection. But it's always so enticing when you go and see a new variety that you don't have. But I hope your plants are doing well, and thanks for tuning in.